Welcome to Cardcore Gamer. This is a series of videos all about board games. This is episode 3 in my mini-series about Sid Meier's Civilization the Board Game, designed by Kevin Wilson and produced by Fantasy Flight Games. This time I'd like to discuss resources, which are the backbone of Civilization. Without resources you can't trade or build, and ultimately you'll lose the game. They're broken down into two main categories. There are ones generated by your cities, and ones that you have to actively harvest. Let's take a look. The first thing to look at is where resources actually come from. The eight squares adjacent to a city are known as the outskirts, and the icons in those squares will tell you what resources are available. The two most common resources are trade and production. Trade is the blue and red arrow symbol, and production is the hammer. They're very similar, but they work in different ways. Trade is gained from every city that you own. You need to count up all the icons in all of the outskirts, and the total is added to your trade dial on your civilization sheet. Production, on the other hand, is managed on a city-by-city -city basis. A city can only produce what it can afford to by the icons in the outskirts. There are a few other differences. For example, points of trade will stay on that dial and carry over to the next turn, whereas production is calculated on a turn-by-turn -turn basis. Also, points of trade can be exchanged with other players, whereas production cannot. So what are trade and production useful for? Well, in addition to being a tradable resource in its own right, trade can be spent to research technologies, to advance along the culture track, to power special abilities, and it also has one other thing it can do which relates directly to production. Production is used almost exclusively for building things. You can create buildings, wonders, figures, and units. We'll focus on buildings for this video because they actually change the resources available on the map. The others will be covered in later videos. With production being a resource generated city by city, turn by turn, you'll sometimes find a city has a shortfall and isn't able to build what you'd like. This is where the special ability of trade comes in. You can exchange three points of trade for one point of production, and you can do this as many times as you like in the city management phase, as long as you have the trade to spare. This is known as rushing production. In order to build things, you must pay their production cost as listed on the market board. The market board is basically just a repository for all the remaining available resources. It also has the culture track, which I'll cover in the culture video. You may only build something if it's available on the market board. If the market board has run out, that item is no longer available to build. To go back to a previous point, buildings are especially important to this video, as they change the symbols and therefore resources available on the map. If you place down a workshop, whichever icons were there are covered, and instead replaced with the three production that the workshop provides. This enables you to specialise a city. Here's a city where buildings have been created to specialise it in production. There are some buildings which have a star. These buildings are limited and therefore can only be built one per city. Buildings have restrictions on where they can be built. For example, a harbour can only be built on water, unsurprisingly, whereas a granary can only be built on grassland. The remaining resources are silk, wheat, iron, incense, uranium and spies. The first four of these are the most common and can be found on the map. If you have an icon for any one of them in one of your city's outskirts, you can harvest them using a city action in the city management phase. These resources can also be found by taking huts and villages, and this is where uranium and spies can also be gained. I'll explain more about huts and villages in the military video. All of these resources are used to power card abilities. No prizes for getting what you do with uranium. With the icons for resources being pre-printed on the map tiles, they do govern to a degree where you'll place your city. If you want more production, you'll want to place your city so that the outskirts fall over more of the hammer icons. But if you don't have the resource you require in your outskirts, how do you go about getting hold of it? Well, there are several ways of doing this. Firstly, you can trade for it with other players. Secondly, through fights you might gain them as spoils of war. Third, you can improve your city by adding buildings which change the icons on the map. And fourth, you can use a scout. One of the abilities your scouts have is that any square they're placed on will act as part of the outskirts for a city of your choosing for the turn. It doesn't have to be the same city every turn, but it can only be one city in a single turn. Any of the icons on the square that the scout sits on are therefore considered to be part of the city and can be collected or harvested accordingly. This is known as sending the tile home. Now there are some other resources marked on the map that I haven't covered, namely culture and coins. These will be covered in the relevant videos later on. So those are the basics of resource management. Hopefully this video has been useful, and hopefully I'll see you next time when I'll be discussing the military aspects of civilization. Any comments, questions, or constructive criticism, please post it in the box below. Thanks for watching.